Welcome to the channel, bringing a real-world perspective to the real-world whiskey consumer. I'm Josh. And I'm Aaron. And we are back with another double blind head-to-head, -head where we have no idea what's in our glass, but we have drawn these two samples at random from our blind sample pool made up of bourbons and rye, and interesting matchups. We can't wait to see what's in this one. We want to compare these because they're probably interesting if they're in the pool for some reason. Yeah. It could be allocated versus available, expensive versus inexpensive, or just two favorites pitted against each other to see where your money might best be spent. Yeah. So with that said, if you like the style of content, like the video and subscribe to the channel because this is what we do over here. It's what we do. Let's go ahead and get glass one on the nose. My first thought is it smells like bourbon. <laughs> it, it is very classic. It's I'll like give you that. It's a classic bourbon smell. Yeah, I'm getting very classic bourbon Caramel vanilla oak. Stung the nostrils a bit there, though. I'm also getting a little bit of cherry and a little bit of peanut brittle type of note. Oh. Like that kind of concentrated sugar okay. note that you get in like a peanut brittle. I don't eat peanut brittle, but I'll believe you. Really? Yeah. You never had it? I don't think so. Interesting. Let's get it on the palate. Wow. It tastes like I just drank some maraschino cherries that had been sitting in wood. Cherry and wood is all I get. And peanut brittle. I don't get any peanut. Man, that's really good. It's like cherries and wood. That's a great flavor profile, I'm not, in my opinion. I'm not mad at it. I will need a second sip, though, to make sure. Yeah, I mean, everything you said, I agree. The cherry that was slightly there on the nose popped out a little bit more mm -hmm. on the palate. It's almost pushing towards like a dark cherry note or like a Luxardo cherry. It's got some richness to it. Maybe. But the it doesn't seem too proofy. Let's get another sip. Hmm. The oak came out more the second time. Yep. The cherry subsided. Yeah. More oak. The finish is sticking around a little bit. Not super strong, but it's saturating the back of my palate pretty well right yeah, now. Yeah. It doesn't fall off though. There is a finish. It doesn't, mm -hmm. it, it, it lingers. It's yeah. soft, but lingering as you like to say. That's really nice. Like personally speaking, flavor profile wise, mm -hmm there's something in here yeah. that I really like a lot. I like a good faint cherry note. I don't like super cherry forward, but if you can mix in cherry with some other stuff, I like that. Yeah. The caramel vanilla oak is all nicely presented. And then again, that peanut brittleness You're that's in caramel? there. You're getting caramel? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't get that or peanut brittle. And that peanut brittle note that's in there is just, I, I really, really enjoy that. That's just something I like a lot. Let's get into glass two and see how it compares on okay. the nose. So I'm getting a lot of oak on this, but not a lot else, but it also smells warm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, like it's going to be hot on the palate? No, or... it just smells like warmth. Like there's a little bit of a weight to it on the yeah. nose. Yeah. 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 To me, this is coming across not too dissimilar from glass one in experience, yeah, but yeah. the profile's a little different. It's Slightly. more just wood and fruit. I'm almost getting a little bit of like a little bit of more of a berry type of note. Whereas this was cherry, vanilla, yeah. real classic bourbon. This is coming through with a little bit more of like a berry medley type of sweetness. Yeah, I can see that. Let's get it on the palate. Definitely less sweet. Wow, less sweet, more punch. More, oh, more punch? More punch for sure. Oh, interesting. It's finishing a lot stronger oh. and everything carries over. Berry medley, wood. That's all I'm getting out of that yeah. is those two notes with like a, a cooked down berry compote in syrup. I'm getting berry medley in wood, but it's not super sweet. It's not as sweet as yeah. glass one. And I'm not, the finish for me is not as strong as glass one. Really? Yeah. This can't, well, when I say strong, they both linger around about the same amount of time. This glass just comes through with a little more heat. Mm, I'm getting more spice on the back of the okay. palate, like alcohol, may, maybe it's proof spice or proof heat. Or maybe it's just like a hmm. profile spice or something. Another sip on glass too. Okay. There's something a little drying about this one, I think. I don't know how I feel about it. I need to spend some more time with it. Yeah, I do think the proof on glass too is a little drying on the back of the palate and mm -hmm. the wood for that matter. Like yeah. old bourbon sometimes can be drying in a bitter way. This is drying more in a young wood way. Mm. Like it's, I want to say a green wood, but it's not super green it's not super young wood it's just the way that it's coming across and mixing with the proof uh -huh. is is leaving the back of my palate dry mm -hmm. but that that berry sweetness is all throughout the palate but it, it is very tempered this is going to be really interesting to spend some time because experience wise they're similar but noticeably different yeah and then profile wise they are quite different mm -hmm. in flavor. So we're gonna spend some time clear our palate start with glass two go back to glass one compare them 
give each class their just dues and we'll be back with our ratings and all that stuff here in just a minute. All right, very interesting because I didn't really know where I landed before taking that break. Same. Where are you at now? I am thumbs up on glass one, thumbs up on glass two, but I do have a preference. What's your preference? My preference is glass one. Okay. Can I tell you why? Yeah, go ahead. Glass two, I found it to be slightly drying and slightly, there was a slight sour note that I got at the, like the last couple sips I took. Mm -hmm. It wasn't enough to be off putting and the drying wasn't enough to be off putting. I did like it. So they both get a thumbs up, but I preferred glass one. Yeah. For me, I prefer glass one as well. Although it is very close for me, mm -hmm. I preferred the flavor profile to glass one yeah. or on glass one. It again, had that cherry, vanilla, oak, caramel, yeah. And peanut brittle. I did get peanut close to the end of tasting this one as well. Yeah. And it seems to me like glass one might have more age to it. It's a little more mm. well-rounded. Okay. But with that said, glass two, a little more rowdy, a little spicier finish, drying on the finish. A little more dry. I don't yeah. know if that's, it's younger or it has more proof or something, maybe both, but it came across a little bit more like a sledgehammer. It was more unrefined. And sometimes I'm in the mood for that. But mm. on a day-to-day -day basis, I would gravitate towards glass one because yeah. it also had a, it had a bunch of flavor. Yeah, it was a powerful flavor. Yeah. I feel like these may be like mid-proof, 100, 105, somewhere in that range. Not super proofy, but powerful in flavor. I think they've got a lot more proof than that. Oh. Because the finishes on both are very good. Interesting. And the finish okay. on glass two has a lot of alcohol heat on it. That's like true. Like it's coming through with That's a fair. lot of alcohol so, heat. So... What I will say is I really appreciate a whiskey that drinks like it's higher proof than it feels. It's higher proof, but it drinks under that. Yeah. Yeah. I like that because then, then I don't feel it as much. Both of these are like that, except glass two hits you on the finish with the heat. Yeah. And it's straight up heat. Like it's, yeah. it's not okay. flavor yeah. or anything like that. I think you might be right. I'm still sticking with 100 on 105, but I think you're right. Okay. And so I'm we wrong. both prefer glass one, mm -hmm. be, you because of the flavor profile and yep. me honestly because of the flavor profile as well. Mm -hmm. And it has just a little bit more well-roundedness and it seems like more age, a little okay. bit more oak to balance out some of the sweetness. Yeah. It was something I yeah. could see myself sipping a little more frequently than glass two. Yes. But they're both great. I like them both. Mm -hmm. Oh. What did you say thumbs up on? Both. Your thumbs up on both? Yeah. I'm thumbs up on both as well. Oh. I like both a lot. I okay. would like to have bottles of both of these. Contingent on price. We're going to find that out first. Yep. See if that changes our ratings before we find out what we're drinking. So in our pool, glass number one is number 73. Okay. So the price on glass number one is... 73? Yep. $80. Okay. I'm staying thumbs up on yeah, that. Yeah. I'm not mad at that. Not mad at that. It's it's more than I probably would spend on an everyday like type of whiskey, but I'm not mad. I thought... I mean, I'm spot on. I'm super happy with that. Glass two. $74. Nope. 74. It's number 74. $80. I'm happy with that as well. Yeah. I'm going to say thumbs up on it as well. We both prefer glass one. Yeah. Slightly. Yeah. I Because. I'm happy to pay that for both of these. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Okay. They're both worth it. All right. Let's start with glass two. What is glass two since it was our least favorite? Stag bourbon batch 18. <laughs> and it is. 131 proof. You okay. are correct, now the sir. Proof, now the, the back end makes sense. What's glass number one? Elijah Craig barrel proof A123. Man. And it's 125.6 proof. Oh, okay. So these both, okay. I, I do need to give props to them because they both drink very well-rounded in the fact that I didn't realize that they were as high a proof as they are. And I think that's, to me, that's skill. Like I, mm -hmm. when, you, when you are a higher proof bourbon and you don't drink hot, that's impressive to me. I think that's why a lot of people like these products. Yeah. Stag batch, stag bourbon batch 18, non-junior stag yeah. batch 18, 131 proof. Remember how I said there was something sour in it? Yeah. <laughs> So you've picked that up on batch 17 as yes, well. I very much dislike Stag Jr. batch yeah. 17. Right. There's still something sour. Okay. There's still something slightly sour in batch 18, but it's not as much. It's not as bad and it didn't dock points for me. So we both spoke to the fact, or I spoke to the fact that I thought glass one had more age or less proof, but it still was coming through with a bunch of flavor. Does it have, does Elijah Craig have more age? Yes. Okay. It has more age and it is whatever. 125.6. Five, five and 
5.4 proof points less. However, I think the most interesting thing to note here, and the reason this matchup was put into our blind head to head pool was because we were lucky enough to get a bottle of both of these. And I wanted to put at the time of us putting it in here, the most recent batch of Elijah Craig versus the most recent batch of Stag, Stag. Bourbon. Mm. Now, Elijah Craig is out with B523 okay. and Stag Bourbon is out with batch 19. But we're totally double blind. We don't know what we're drinking. Yeah. And we both preferred glass one. We did. So while Stag is a really, really good bourbon. It's, it is it's harder to find. Way harder to find. It's 60 to to $100 at most places if you get it for a fair price. But a lot of places mark it up to $300 gotcha. or more. Okay. 250 300 okay. or more. Whereas Elijah Craig, Barrel Proof, is going to fall in that $70 to $100 range. Is it easier to find in Stag? I mean, I know it's easier to find than yeah. Stag, but is it easy to find in general? If it's in a market, can you find it? In our market, no. You oh. have to get the hook up on this. Oh, okay. But Or you have to be at the shop at the right time. But in some markets, it does sit on shelves. Okay. So I guess the takeaway from this video is if you can't find Stag and you're really interested in it, and you're really interested in trying it, just mm -hmm. know that there are products out there that can go toe to toe, even come across a little bit better. Yeah. And honestly, if you're kind of new to bourbon and you're, you know, you're seeing a lot of people talk about a lot of these products like Stag, and I'm a Stag fan. Stag Junior is one of my favorite yeah. products on the market. It's hit or miss for me, I'm not gonna lie. It is, but to know that there's a product out there like Elijah Craig Barrel Proof or any barrel proof single barrel pick mm -hmm. we've had natural barrel uh, company picks that have gone toe to toe with stag there are products on the market that can measure up to this yeah, so if you want true. the bottle and you're willing to pay the premium for it like 250 or 300 dollars do your thing but if you're just looking for that type of experience it's maybe six to nine or seven to nine year old kentucky bourbon at Barrel Proof, and there's a lot of that on the market, including nice. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, which is 12 years old. So you can't go wrong with getting this. And if you think you can't go wrong with watching this channel, again, like the video, subscribe, and hit that bell down there to be notified when we go live. Join us for a pour on one of our live streams. We'd love to have you. Yep, that's it for today. Be good to each other, and until next time, cheers. cheers.